another beautiful day on the plot and I'm just looking around surveying the land thinking what's the best thing to do next and I'm thinking I will get on and sort these barrels out so basically see if I can get them to join together with some various bits of hose and try and work out the levels and I've got a couple of other barrels namely those two green ones I don't know whether to introduce them into the line or not I need to be a bit cautious because I want space for my potatoes and that feels like a pretty good space that's left so we'll see see how it goes but I think the first thing is to turn those the right way up and just see where the existing holes are and I'll go from there it just wouldn't be an episode of allotments for fun and food unless I took the temperature of my compost and I had a great suggestion last week why don't I rather than sort of plunge it into the side at the top stick it through the middle of one of these and see what it records at so here we go I think I'm going to go in about there straight through this what I think is underlay and see where we go and we're rising and we're up to well, what is that? Gosh, I can hardly see. We're approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're just passing 100 degrees. That's 40 degrees centigrade just gone past. I can feel the warmth coming out of this. And yeah, so it's settled just after 100 degrees Fahrenheit, about 43 degrees centigrade. Good times. Right, well, these are my tools. I've got my trusty drill and I just need to find, I think they call these a Fosner bit, which is about the same size as this blue hose. And that's 25 and that's just slightly smaller, which I think means if I really push it in, I'll get a good watertight fixing. So that's the plan. And I'll turn these over now. And we'll have a look. Oh, try and get that undone. We'll have a look at how I line up the holes that exist already. Right, I'll get this off and we'll have a look. Right, this little fella, which is the shortest one on the end, has got one hole in it, which is perfect. This one has got one hole, which will line up nicely. This one's a bit tall. So I think we'll have him out, stick in there. That one's nice and level now. And because I've got a bit of a gradient, yeah, that works out perfectly. So unfortunately, these don't line up brilliantly, but I think I can make it work. This one is a real challenge because it definitely wants to lean over. So I think I'm gonna have to do a bit of work underneath it first. Right. I had a bit of excess soil when I was flattening this area. So I'm just gonna add that in to the wheelbarrow and move it over and put it under that barrel. See if I can get a level playing field and then I can work out the best thing to do to connect them up. Right. I think that'll do. Okay, I'm going to lift this membrane and just get some soil in there. I think I'll just tip it up. Get it a little bit flat. I'll just try it for size. I think that's going to be fine. Okay. I think that'll do it. 
Right, connection time. Okay, so that one's gonna go into that one very simply. This one, I might do myself a couple of new holes because this one's a bit off skew. And then I've got a good hole lining up with this one. And then if I mess this one around, mix it a bit, then I can probably get from there into there. Okay, let's make some new holes and cut some hose. That was just too easy. I got this hose the other day. Somebody dropped it off. It was a neighbor who was parting with it, which is lovely. So I've decided to use that because it's a lot more flexible for pushing through these holes. So this had a nutted fitting on it. So I was able to push it over that one, make the hole perfect, and then slightly lower on the inside to fill from that one to this one. Good times. There we go, there's number two. And I ended up switching the barrels over because the holes on this one were just a bit too low. So I need to think that through. So that's worked out fine. I'm pretty sure that that's going to flow in without any problem and it's gone through nicely. If I need to, I'll put a bit of silicone around these, but I don't actually think I will need it because it's quite a good fit. Right, so let's see if I can line something up with this one. Well, that one was a bit fiddly. I needed to get a bit of extra height on it because it's got a hole in the back. And if I'm not careful, it will flow out the back rather than through the front. I could always bung it and it still might be needed, but I think that will work. And then this one's a little bit lower, so it, the tube goes down into it. So there'll be nothing but a, a reality check when I fill them, fill them with water, which I'll probably do from a hose from my neighbor, just to make sure everything's working before I settle with what I'm gonna do. So I think that's gonna work. And now I need to just raise this one a little, I think, and let that do the same, sort of work its way into this water bar. And if, this one's got a bit of a, a fitting on it, so if I come out the back, I can probably do a curve and come back into it, save me doing another hole, which would be brilliant. So I think it's gonna go like that. And, well, we'll see. Well, it was a bit of a faff. You definitely need a little bit more height on each one as you go down. So I've ended up raising these two just slightly. So there's definitely a slope down now into that one, a slope into this one, a slope into this one, and a slope into this one. And that way they will probably fill up and maybe even overflow here. I'm not too worried about that, but yeah, we'll fill that up in due course and see how things work out. Well, things are getting a bit messy in here as I'm pulling out. So I'm just gonna make the next big step, which is to take this old bench out, which I built. And I hope that I'll be using this in a new shed someday. So I am gonna remove it. Should be pretty straightforward. I put it together. I think it's all screws, but I'm gonna clear the surface, get rid of some of the bits underneath and hopefully get this bench out in one piece, or at least the legs and the top. See how I get on. It's so-and-so's law, or Murphy's law, or one of those laws anyway, but I've got it out. The legs are a bit wobbly because I had to give it a big, big tug and of course my drill has run out of battery power. Isn't it always the way? So I'm gonna hoof this back in upside down just so it keeps dry and I'll get a recharged battery and get these legs out and then I can get it moving. So it's not been a wasted journey pulling it out because it was well fixed in. But once I take the legs off, I can fold it down and probably store it underneath my seed bench in the polytunnel until I'm ready. Well, that's me done for today. 
the sun started to set and well made good use of my drill and it's good to have got those barrels all lined up well hope you've had a good day and i'll see you in the next section of the video well i just walked onto the plot and well it's a strange phenomenon i'll show you so if you look at this bed that i'm leaving which is the squash bed you can see that all the soil mounds are fairly dry but if you walk in the other direction they look fairly damp i can only imagine that the mist that we're experiencing and have been experiencing all day must be gradually moving in that direction very unusual never seen that before on my plot there we are well there could be trouble in the Kingswell household today because, well, I didn't get my allotment clothing ready for the plot. So I've come over in my normal day-to-day -day clothing and that might not go down well if I manage to get mud on it or mark it from the job that I'm going to do. And the job that I'm going to do today is prune my pear tree so you can take a look at it from here you can see the branches that are reaching for the sky those really tall ones they're water shoots and they're the result of last year's pruning and this is what tends to happen you prune and you get a reaction of lots of branches growing upwards and reaching for the sky as i say so i'm going to take the vast majority of those away to keep the overall sort of rounded shape of this tree and that's been a successful method for the last couple of years so i'm going to do that and then i'm quite happy with the branches that trail i notice i've got a bit of damage in there but it doesn't look infected so I might just take that out above that damage and this path has become a little bit difficult so I might have a look at a few of these branches that are hanging down but let me show you what's happening close up so you can see on all of these outward facing branches and on the upward ones as well We've got the development of quite a lot of buds happening now. And this is still dormant, but they're just looking like if we had some warm weather, they could really get a move on. So I'm feeling like it's the right time and there's lots of views on what is the right time, but it's always worked for me to do this job in February. And I've waited to about the middle of February now. So, I'll get my loppers out. I've got my trusty secateurs. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take the top out and you can have a look at it when I'm done. Okay, that's the real structural stuff down. And you can see I've taken out almost all of those upward shooting branches. I can see a couple of small ones which I'll take out as well, things like this one. But my next step in here, I can get round, is just to get rid of anything that's really crossing over and causing, you know, wear on the branches is what you're thinking about really, as well as trying to open it up a little. So things like this branch, which is really just log jammed in between that splitting branch there and you've got quite a lot of busyness going on here with things crisscrossing so to be honest it's not particularly scientific and i'll always cut just above a bud so that hopefully a bud can grow out but i'm just looking to well, make it a little less confusing. If you look in there, look how crisscrossy it is. 
So I'm trying to remove some of that. So I take those last few top ones out and just try and thin it a little, nothing too dramatic. There we go. There's still a little bit of upward growth on the top. I'm gonna to leave that just in the interest of shape. The tree's a little bit one-sided now because there's quite a lot of growth down here, but you soon get that growing back. So we keep taking the top out and all in all, it's not looking bad at all. I've sort of cut myself an archway through there because I think it's quite attractive, especially when the blossom comes out. But yeah, that's a reasonable haircut for the pear tree and we'll keep it in good order. Right, bit of a clean up to do now, all those clippings. Okay, I'm gonna cut away this bit of damage. You can see it at the tip of the pruners there. It doesn't look infected, but I'm not gonna take any risks because it could easily become infected. So I'm gonna take that whole branch out at that point. Quite tough. I have to shorten my loppers, get a bit more strength in them so that they do the job. Right, let's try again. Getting this thing cut. I'm making a bit of a dog's dinner. Eh? And what I will do, because that's a bit of a open wound, is put some of this self heal on it, which is good stuff and just keeps any potential infection out of the wound. There we go. And the rain should run off that because it's on an angle. There we go. Okay, that's that done. And I'll show you the total clippings that have come off the tree. So there's the tree from the lower end of the allotment. And that's where I've taken off. So not masses, but significant. And mainly just to maintain the overall shape. Okay, I can go and get chipped down at the bottom of the allotment. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It certainly helps the channel. And I hope you've had a good week on your allotment and that the weather's holding out for you. It's not raining. That's good news. Jochen Val.